Welcome to the Network Marketing Heroes Podcast, hosted by 40-year network marketing veteran, author of best-selling books, The Four-Year Career, and Mach 2 with Your Hair on Fire, and world-renowned speaker, Richard Bliss Brook. When it comes to success in network marketing, who better to learn from than leaders who have actually done it? Listen as Richard interviews top leaders and gives you a behind-the-scenes look at how they did it. You'll get incredible tips and duplicable actions you can do right now to build your own four-year career. Stay tuned after this episode for an exclusive discount code to get 10% off Richard's easy-to-use tools that will help propel your network marketing business to the next level at blissbusiness.com. Good evening, everybody. Welcome. We have the extreme pleasure of interviewing Sonia Magruder tonight. She has an extraordinary story, only two years old in Purium and already building a beautiful team. So, Sonia, let's dive into it. Uh, Tell us your story. Start with, tell us a little bit about you and your family. Okay. And what you have been doing for a living prior to getting involved in network marketing and where you live and all that nitty-gritty stuff. Okay, sounds good. Thank you, Richard, and thank you for having me on. This is really an honor. I really, really appreciate it. Um, So I'm a native Floridian and originally from South Florida. Um, My parents, my dad was an immigrant from Greece, and my mom's parents were immigrants. So I grew up in the restaurant business with my parents being in that business and always being self-employed as long as I can remember. My, my dad was very entrepreneurial, never in network marketing, but he was very entrepreneurial, had a great work ethic, so I really learned a lot from him and my mom. Um, and then I got into retail. So I, w- I was in retail for a long time. Um, I worked for a large national, very recognizable cosmetic company, and I did that for several years. I was in management and got kind of burned out on that, especially when I got a review that was an excellent review, and I was told that I was going to get a $0.40 cent an hour raise. I was hourly. So for all that great work I did, $0.40 cent an hour raise for the year. Nice. So, yeah, so I had a few years prior to that, my mother had encouraged me to get my real estate license, which I did, but I never did anything with it because I was always thinking, oh, that's commission only, that there's no safety net. It's straight commission. But I got married um, in 1998 to my husband, Doug, who works with me in the Purian business also. And he was so supportive and so encouraging and just said to me, look, you're burnt out on this other thing you're doing. Why don't you go into real estate? You have the license. Why don't you do it? And he really had like such confidence in me because we were pretty broke at that point when we got married. So it was pretty cool that he had that confidence and he just encouraged me to just take the leap of faith and do it. So it was a good decision and I tripled my income the first year in real estate from what I had been making at the previous job. So that was awesome. I had never made that much money before and I continued in real estate and pretty much made a six-figure income almost from the outset, and then eventually opened up my own brokerage. And what city was this in? That's in the Tampa area where we live now. Okay. Right. Good. So I did that, and then I worked in real estate full-time for about 16 years. And while I love real estate, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's very interesting. It can be very challenging. But it can also be a grind. So it was a much better feeling than working for the corporate world. And, you know, especially when I worked at that other job, I really put my heart and soul into it, like I do with everything, but didn't get compensated for that. You know, didn't really get the recognition or compensation. So now I didn't care if I was working 60 or 80 hours a week because it was doing it for myself. I was an independent contractor, and I would – get the remuneration of the work that I was doing. So I was making really good money. I was working a lot. And the downside was, you know, I was working nights and weekends, like doing whatever, 
it took to really get this business going. So there were a lot of vacations I missed. I have three stepsons. They were little boys at the time. And my husband would take vacations without me because I couldn't leave because the real estate business was so busy. And it, it was just hard to get a break from it. So Yeah, that, real estate is 20, 24-7, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it really can be. I remember one time showing a house to someone at midnight because that yep. was the only time they could look at houses because they had a business that tied them down all the time. So even though I loved being an entrepreneur and being in business for myself, I was still kind of a slave to it. You know, it, there really wasn't that freedom. Money was great, but I didn't really have time. So fast forward few years later, which was about a little over two years ago, almost two and a half years ago, my cousin was posting on Facebook about some products, and I was also concerned about my mother. My mother was living with us. We, my husband and I were her caregiver. She was elderly, and she had dementia, and she was going through a phase where she wouldn't eat. I couldn't get her to eat anything, and I was really stressing about that. Plus, I had my full-time business. My husband was doing his real estate investment business, and I was kind of at my wit's end because I wanted her to have good nutrition. So my cousin Eric, who's on this call, Eric Mish from Miramar, was posting some things on Facebook, and I, I knew how he was, like super meticulous about how he took care of himself. So when he and his wife came up to visit one weekend, I just had to ask him. And I, I do remember, I have to confess, this is terrible, but I looked at his website because he had put his website on Facebook, and I did think, not necessarily in a negative way, I just remember thinking, oh, it's one of those. And then he came up, and I, he didn't say anything to me. I was waiting for him to pitch me. And he didn't, so I had to ask him because I really was interested in the products. So that's how I got introduced to Purium. So uh, go back uh, just a second, Tony. Had you ever been prospected to join any other network marketing companies? Um, I have to think. I don't think so. Okay. Not that I recall right offhand. So when you, said, when you had the thought, oh, he's in one of those things, what did you mean by one of those things? A network marketing company or multi-level marketing. <laughs> And did you have a neutral, negative, or positive impression of those things? I would say neutral. Okay, well, that's very it was neutral. cool. Yeah, and I had read a book a couple years before that called Multiple Streams of Income. I think it's by Robert Allen. And it, it was very heavy on the real estate side, but it also had a chapter about network marketing. And maybe there was a little bit of a seed planted then, because I remember reading that chapter and thinking, that's kind of cool, but not really mm -hmm. wanting to pursue it at that time because I was all about real estate. Okay, so it was actually the products that attracted you. It was totally the products. I was not looking for any business, network marketing business, because we really had our plates full between real estate brokerage, flipping houses, we own rental properties, and taking care of my mom. I mean, it, at that point, it was – hard for us to – we hadn't taken a vacation for five years. We couldn't go away. So it was hard to even literally sometimes just go out to dinner. And eventually I did get some help with my mom. But, um, yeah, so it was strictly product for my mom. And he – Eric was awesome. This guy travels with a Vitamix, literally. So <laughs> he made something up for her, and it was a solution. It was like a godsend. And – that took care of that, and then I had my own issues with, you know, trying to lose weight and nothing was working and, you know, being stressed and everything from all the things that were coming at me. So Eric had a solution for that too with, with what he had, you know, with Purium. So that was it, like product only. I was thinking about my mom and myself, and then my husband joined me in with the product experience. We had a great experience. And, um, you know, I still wasn't thinking business at that point because I was so how busy. Long, how long was your product experience? How long did you use the products before you said, wow, these, this stuff really works? Ten days. 
Okay, beautiful. Yeah. So then was- how did the transition happen that you saw or were interested in the income opportunity? Who said what or what tool did somebody give you? Well, I didn't really have a tool, but people started asking me what they did, what I did, and my husband too, because we had lost weight, so they noticed. Like I would see realtors, and then maybe two weeks later, because it was only a 10-day thing, so two weeks later we're at a closing, and they're like, wow, what happened to you? So it was people asking me, and I felt great, so I was more than happy. I didn't really know what I was talking about you know, what this thing was that I did. I wasn't exactly sure. But, um, you know, and honestly, Eric, you know, sometimes with family, we tread lightly. So he didn't say anything to me about the business. And he didn't try to sell me a pack, like a business builder pack or anything like that. (laughs) Eric Eric should write a book on the soft sell. I know. (laughs) I love it. The really soft sell. So, you know, I, but I didn't know either that I wanted to do that. But I do love and did love then the concept of multiple streams of income. I always did love that and having some diversification. So when people started asking me, and I was real excited about my product experience, I kind of couldn't help it. Like it just naturally happened. And then I had to go back and order what I really needed you know, to yep. to start doing this. And to be honest, even like the first month, I was kind of dabbling. You know, it was just, it was kind of like a fun diversion for me because it was so different from what I was already doing. So it was just, honestly, I shouldn't say this, but I'm going to say the truth. It was like a hobby for me. And you know what happens when we treat it like a hobby? <laughs> it pays you like a hobby. So the first month, we did get our products paid for. That was awesome. And that was kind of cool. It's like, okay, I got my real estate income, which is great. My husband and I, as a result of our product experience, didn't want coffee anymore. So it's like, oh, we're saving $300 a month on coffee, and we're getting these free products. This is awesome. So that's kind of where I was at. You know, I wasn't full bore into doing this. Okay, so what, what shifted? Did you go to an event that shifted something, or did you read something that shifted you? Uh, no, I I didn't really go to an event for several months. I don't think there really wasn't an event. There wasn't really anybody in my area here, and Eric lives in South Florida. We're in Tampa, so there really wasn't an event. But what happened was, <clears throat> I was sharing, and people were sharing, the people that I shared with, and having these great, profound product experiences. And the aha moment was when I looked at the direct deposit a few months later. And I told my husband, I said, did you see the direct deposit today? Because it's equivalent to one of our rental properties, to the income from one of our rental properties. We just got ourselves another rental property without buying the property. So Mm -hmm. that was a pretty big aha moment. Then I really started thinking, and it was still a lot less money then I was making in real estate, and it was also not enough money to quit our jobs over or our businesses. It wasn't enough to cover our expenses, but it got me thinking because I started thinking, okay, we have to spend X on a rental to buy that stream of income, or how much money would we have to have sitting in the bank at today's interest rates to get that stream of income? Yep. And it's like a boatload of money. So that's really when it clicked. And prior to that, I remember I was driving around. I was previewing houses for this couple. They were coming down from Atlanta, and they wanted to buy a house on the Gulf. And Eric called me. Now Eric was no longer in soft sell mode. Eric calls me up, and he says, hey, who have you talked to today today about Purium? He says, I've talked to so-and-so and and -and so-and-so. They're really on fire, and this is going to be big, and what are you doing, and who have you talked to? And I was just like, dude, I – I got that check from Purium. This is before the aha moment. That was like $32. That was real exciting. But I'm trying to sell an $800,000 house here, so do the math. So I was still like, you know, getting these little checks, and it hadn't clicked yet. I didn't have that vision 
but when I saw that check, that deposit, that equaled a rental, that's where it all kind of gelled and came together. Uh-huh. And I decided I could really, my husband and I both decided we could really go forward with this. Yeah, I love that. Okay. So once you decided to go forward, uh, what did you do? What were your strategies? And um, give me some stats and time frames. So once you decided to go forward, whenever that was, uh, what did you do in the next 90 days? Well, I will say in my first 90 days, the very first 90 days, I only enrolled nine people. In the first year, I enrolled about 37, 40 people maybe. So I really mm-hmm. ramped it up and really cast the big net out and started talking to everybody. And every time I would get a real estate call, I would get so excited, not because of the real estate, but because, oh, here's another person I can talk to about <laughs> Purium. Well, that's interesting. How did you make that transition with people? If you're talking to them about real estate, uh, what was the opportunity that was created in conversation that allowed you to transition to Purium? Well, one of the calls, this guy called, and he was calling for his girlfriend looking for commercial space. And he said, yeah, she's a health coach, and she needs an office. And that was all I needed to hear, that she was a health coach. So yeah, and what did you I, say to her? Well, I said, and I don't know how much I'm at liberty to say here, Richard. You know, I know we're saying it's Purium, but I just said to her, hey, have, by any chance, have you heard of Purium? And have you heard of the Green Foods Bible written by David Sandoval? She, oh, yeah, I know that book. Because she was all about, her whole thing is about alkalinity. I looked at her website. And, oh, yes, I'm familiar with him. So I just started the conversation that way. Um, Another one person called me, and she said, I'm Dr. So-and-so. So, you know, because we have nutritional products, that was just a perfect opening. Funny thing was, she was also with a network marketing company, and she tried to pitch me on hers, which was a <laughs> totally different thing. <laughs> when we met at the house, the listing that she called me on, we were both doing it. She gave me her card, and I gave her mine. So, but the interesting thing is in that first, the very first 90 days where I was just kind of dabbling here and there, a couple of seeds were planted in that 90, initial 90-day 90 period that did not come to fruition in those 90 days. They came to fruition after the 90 days, in that first year, but after the 90 days. And what's really interesting is that those seeds have become two of my leader legs from that initial 90-day period. Is there a uh, story there that you can tell us? Actually, yeah, there is. So one of them is someone, and she's an amazing leader on my team. She's a, you know, high rank. She's a crown. And because we had this great product experience and it changed how we ate, like we totally did a 180 with what we were doing, So somebody recommended, actually seed number one recommended, there's a story with that one too, that one recommended that we go to this health and wellness fair because, oh, you guys are into this now, you're going to really enjoy this. You should go listen to this guy speak, which had nothing to do with network marketing. It was just a guy, like a doctor speaking. So we went there and there were vendors there. And one of the vendors was a health coach a raw food coach, her name is Doreen Martin, and she had a table set up there, and I got her card, and for some reason, she was the only one that I contacted. But I thought, after I left, I didn't talk to anybody or her at the time at the event, but after I left, I thought, she would love this. I don't even know her. I didn't even meet her that night, but just looking at her website and her card, I thought, she would love this. So I started emailing her some information, I sent about four or five emails. She completely ignored me. And then I left some voicemail messages, and she continued to ignore me. And then finally, several months later, she called me back. And we had a great conversation, and she came on board. And she's now a top leader on my team. Yeah, beautiful. All right, tell us what happened the second year. So first year you sponsored about 30 people which by the way that's that's a, that's a great effort that's 
maybe not, you know, over the top, but mm-hmm. um, 37. that's almost uh, 37. So that's three people a month. That's a great pace. So uh, I'm curious, out of those 37 people the first year, how many of those are building – they're like what you would call leaders that are building now. They're mm-hmm. somewhat self-reliant. You don't have to babysit them. Maybe they're not rock stars, but they're building their own leg out of those 37. Um, I would say three, and then there's a couple more that are still involved, but more they're more like product users, and they have product users under them that are not yeah, okay. builders, really. Well, three is, three is right where you should be. Three out of 37 is... Um, that's awesome. That's about what it ends up being. You know, about one out of ten people actually have the self-motivation and the work ethic and the self-esteem to see this opportunity and build it without you having to push them too hard. What happened the second year? How many people did you sponsor the second year? Second year, I think, was about 20. But what happened towards the end of the first year I had a a setback, um, and, you know, I was not an overnight success. I wasn't one of these people that just, like, shot to the top, and and I did build this organically, um, you know, just starting from scratch and with a learning curve. But the first year, towards the end of the year, the end of November, my mom fell and broke her hip and was hospitalized and had surgery, came out of it, but then there was something that happened at the hospital that caused her to pass away. So I, that was December and January, December 2013, January 2014, and my mom passed away, who I had been caring for for two years, but more than two years, but two years in my house. And I was really devastated. I, I was crushed, and I, I didn't really do anything those two months because it was really devastating for me. And then February of that year of 2014 so that was really the beginning of my second year is where I kind of just said I've, I've got to kind of pull myself up out of this and and that's what I did and February of 2014 I, I requalified I hit diamond the diamond rank in November of 2013 and then fell back you know with what happened with my mom and then February I requalified for diamond and then every month between February and July, I rank advance. I hit crown in July, right before our convention. That's awesome. <clears throat> um, so you're in this now two and a half years? I would say, yeah, about two and a half years. And how many people total have you sponsored? About, let's see, it's a, probably a little bit over 80. It was, I think, when I wrote you when you asked the questions of how many I sponsored, I think I said 78, but now it's probably, since then, it's probably 82. Okay. And out of those 82, uh, can you guess roughly how many of them are autonomous? Not that you're not supporting them and helping Mm -hmm. them, but they're self-sufficient, self-motivated leaders driving their own legs out of 82. Five. That's awesome. And you probably have some that have yet to sort of drop into that place because how many months did it take you to drop into that place of being a self-sufficient leader? It took me a lot of months. (laughs) It it did not happen overnight. Okay. I mean, it took me... So my guess is, Sonia, if we were to have this talk a year from now, you'd probably have eight or ten leadership legs that were growing, which is fantastic. That's the makings of a multi, multi multi-million dollar business. Really, really, really good work. Congratulations. Thank you. So would you tell us, uh, you already told us about one, but uh, would you tell us a story or two about someone you connected with, 
someone you introduced the products and opportunity to that has resulted in one of your biggest legs? Like, tell us a success story of somebody you met or somebody you knew, you introduced them to the opportunity of the product, they got involved, and they've gone on to build themselves a very nice business. Maybe they don't have a multi-million dollar business yet, but they're on their way to doing that. Can you tell us a story or two about somebody like that? Absolutely. And by the way, the the one story I already told you, Doreen, she had no network marketing experience either. So that's pretty remarkable, you know, what she's done as well. But um, the other one is somebody who I had on my list. So I had her programmed in my phone. I did not know her, but we had mutual friends. And I hadn't called her yet, not that I was, she wasn't on my chicken list or anything like that. I was definitely going to call her, just hadn't done it yet. But someone, one of the mutual friends had even said to me, oh, she'll never do this because she already has a product line that her father owns. Well, that meant nothing to me. I didn't really care that they said that. Like, that wouldn't stop me. But I just hadn't called her yet. And one day... She called. I saw her because I had programmed her in my phone. So I saw her name come up on my phone. And, of course, I'm thinking right away, oh, my friend must have told her that I want to talk to her about Purium, and she's calling me. No, she was calling about real estate. I had a listing. She drove by. She saw the sign. And she was calling me about that. So I was really happy that that property was already under contract because then I didn't really have to talk about it too much, and I could get right to Purium when she called me. So I told her, yeah, but it's under contract, sorry. And I said, but have you heard about Purium? I've been wanting to talk to you. We have mutual friends. I know who you are. I said, are you Dr. Dana? She said, yes. Her, her name is Dr. Dana McGrady. And she's a doctor of oriental medicine and an acupuncture physician. And I, went, I said, I'd like to talk to you about this and bring some of the products and show them to you. I think they would be a great fit with your clinic and what you're doing. And I also want to come in and see you anyway for myself as a patient. So I, I went and, oh, she was so nice too. She said, when you call my office, just tell them to schedule an extra half hour so you can talk to me about Purium. Wow. And that's how this woman is. I didn't know her. She's like a ray of sunshine, and she's beautiful in and out, inside and out. And I thought, wow, who does, like, what doctor ever does that? That's so nice. So I went there, met her, and brought my stuff. She has a machine that she tests everything on, and she tested it. And she said people bring their stuff in all the time. So she was kind of hoping, as much as she was being very nice, she was kind of hoping, like, oh, I'll stick it on the machine. It's going to test bad, and I can get her out of here. That's what she says now. But she put it on the machine. It tested really good. So, you know, she got very intrigued. So what I loved about Dana was initially she was just interested in promoting this to her patients. And I would keep going in to see her because of my follow-up appointments with her for myself. And then I think the second or third appointment I said, because she's got two little girls, I said, have you thought about residual income? Have you ever thought about that? And she said, well, not really, but I would like to spend more time with my babies because she worked at three different clinics, one on the other side of the state too. So she started the seedless plan and she started thinking about it. And then the next time I think she asked me how much I was making and I told her and she made a decision. And she said, I want to be where you're at. Just tell me what I need to do. And she had never done network marketing before either. So that was her mindset making a decision, and just saying, tell me what I need to do to get there. And, she, and what has she built? <clears throat> she has a huge team. She's a two-star crown in Purium. And she got uh, to uh, two-star crown. I don't know crown. what that means, but uh, okay. how, like, what does that mean? <clears throat> well, it's 200000 in volume. Okay, beautiful. And That's a great business. She did that in under a year. She did it faster than I did it. She did it in about 11 months. And she, this woman works so hard, and just, she just threw herself into this and just was so coachable. 
and just willing to, I mean, right after she enrolled, I don't know, maybe it was a month, she came to our national convention, and that even just solidified this more for her. And it was not convenient. She found out, just found out she was pregnant with her third child. They were moving to a new house. I mean, all kinds of stuff, were, things were going on in her life. But she made it happen. And her husband, Adam, was, he's a doll. He was so supportive of her. And he said, go, you need to go do this. Let's, let's see what it's about. Let's find out more. So that's what she did. And she loved it, made a further decision of, yes, this just verifies and confirms everything, and I'm really going to go for this. Okay, beautiful. Congratulations. That was a that was a great enrollment there. Very courageous of you. So um, let's go back to the day you decided to uh, approach her. Can you remember what you were thinking, like when you first had the thought, like you said some interesting things. I think you said she, you think she would be great at this or you really wanted to talk to her because she was a doctor and she had this clinic. Can you just sort of uh, isolate some of the things that you said to yourself before you actually approached her that empowered you to talk to her? What I said to myself was so she's going to love this. <laughs> All right, let's decide she's going to love this. Uh And what else did you decide that empowered you to talk to her? Well, I had and have a very strong belief in, in the products, and I just knew, like, when she sees this, she's going to take a look at it, and it's a no-brainer. It's going to be a no-brainer for her. So that was pretty much it, and I'm going to sign her up. Okay, so she's going to love this. When she sees this, it's going to be a no-brainer, and you're going to sign her up. Three, very empowering. And for the listening audience, what I want you to focus on is these are things that Sonia just made up. We call these creative interpretations. People that are highly motivated, that have a vision about building something, they make up empowering interpretations kind of like we call them green lights that put them into action. So, you know, just think about everybody that's on your list and imagine how effective you could be at talking to them if you would just decide to make up empowering things. I mean, it would be really easy, wouldn't it, Sonia, to make up she's too busy, she's a doctor, everybody tries to probably prospect her, with yeah. all of their MLM nutritional stuff. Um, you know, she's not going to give me the time. would have been easy to make all of those things up. And the people that stay paralyzed in our business, they just make stuff like that up. And when you make stuff like that up, you don't call people. And if you do call people, you kind of go through the motions of, well, I'm just trying to check somebody off my list so I can say I called them, but... I don't really think they're going to be interested or they're going to blow me off or they're not going to give me the time. So that's really, really powerful stuff. And I congratulate you for having the vision and the self-motivation to make up those green lights. That's going to serve you immensely well through your entire career. Thank you. I love what you just said about creative interpretations and how you elaborated on that. And how yeah, well, <clears throat> you can call it, it someone is, just going through go the motions, ahead, like you said. I'm sorry. You could call someone, like you just said, going through the motions to check them off. Like, okay, let me cross this off my list, where you're not really calling with that intention and putting that energy forth, that positive energy, that it's, it's a foregone conclusion that it's going to happen. You have to see yeah, it I mean, like there's, it's there's, already there's happened. Three, there's three kinds of people in our business. There's those people that don't do anything. So they may have a list of people, but they don't ever call them. They spend all of their time, you know, avoiding calling people, which can be very tiresome. 
at the end of the day, you can be completely burned out if you spend your day avoiding calling people. And then there are those people that they have what they consider to be a work ethic, and they consider themselves to be committed, and they consider themselves to be somebody that follows directions. And so those people may enroll in a, you know, a coaching or a training program or a mentoring program or an accountability program or some sort of you know, training program with the company, and they'll have a list of people, and you know, they'll agree to talk to two or three people a day, and they'll check those people off their list as they go through them. But what they're all about is going through the motions so they can say they did. Mm-hmm. And what's missing, and, and, and those people kind of have it in their head that, look, this thing is supposed to work. They told me if I talk to two people a day, you know, eventually somebody's going to get in. You can't say the wrong thing to the right person. And, you know, it's all about the numbers game. And so if I just go through the motions, then it's up to the company and the opportunity to deliver me some great distributors because I'm going through the motions. That's the second group of people. Those people also fail in network marketing. And then the third group of people are people that understand that it's not the how-to that makes a difference. It's the why-to. It's the attitude that you go at this with. And if you, like, you know, really dial it down into psychology, it is, you know, what kind of vision, and that's a fancy word for what kind of story do you tell yourself about a particular prospect? And if the story you tell yourself is, this is going to be a slam dunk for them, they're going to this, and I'm going to sign them up, then how could you not call them? Well, of course you'd call them if that's what you made up about them. And then just imagine the energy and the attitude and the confidence and the peaceful power and also the enthusiasm, all of those things go together, that would be involved in that conversation. That's the kind of conversation that attracts people. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's, You know, people may look at a website. They may go to the Purium website and go, oh, wow, this is absolutely amazing. And they may look at the products and go, oh, these products are absolutely amazing. But if you as the person that is approaching them is downtrodden, if you're depressed, if you're hypey and, you know, hype and over-exaggerating and pressuring, that doesn't come from confidence. That comes from fear and desperation. And those kind of energies, even if the website is attractive and the product's attractive, those kind of energies repel people. So the people that are successful are doing exactly what you're doing. They're making up what we call in the vision and self-motivation business creative interpretations, green lights, because it is the gift of being human What separates humans from the rest of the animal kingdom is we have the gift of being able to decide what we're going to think. You know, animals don't have that gift. They do everything by instinct. It's all hardwired into their DNA. We have the gift of thought, of choice. We can choose to decide Somebody's going to be difficult. Somebody's going to blow us off. Somebody's not going to be interested. Somebody's going to be too busy. Somebody, oh, we're going to get them in. They're probably going to fail anyway. You know, we can decide all that stuff, or we can decide the stuff that propels us into very powerful action. And that doesn't mean that everybody's going to get in. But that's how we give ourselves the best possible shot of getting people in. Absolutely. Great, great work a, there. Our, I just took a ton of notes, Richard. Thank you. That was great. <laughs> You're welcome. I was writing really uh, Every fast. once in a while, I'll throw a tidbit in. Uh, so shifting gears, Sonia, uh, what is the single biggest mistake 
that you have made in the last two and a half years in building your network marketing business, and it was a mistake that you made one time, or it's a mistake that you made repetitively, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a mistake that costs you money. It could have cost you health, integrity, relationship, anything like that. Anything okay. come to mind? Yeah, actually two things come to mind. Can I say two? Sure. Okay. So one of them was it was the first year, and it was a self-limiting belief that I had. Um, my cousin Eric and then his upline, who's also my upline, Joel Calandrillo, who is an amazing holistic health coach. They're both extremely knowledgeable on nutrition. And we have home parties called Healthy Happy Hours. And I hesitated for a long time to do them because I saw these guys and listened to them talk, and they could talk for like an hour on nutrition, and I just thought, I can't do that. Now, I'm a realtor. I don't have any background in that, and who's going to listen to me? And, you know, I, mistakes can be good because you learn from them. It, it can always turn into something positive. So I hesitated for a long time to do that. When I did start, I just bit the bullet and started doing them. My business really took off. But I also learned when I do these, and I, I have to say at the time, we didn't have the tools that we have now. We didn't have the plug-and-play video. So it was kind of winging it, and these guys are so knowledgeable, they would talk on and on about this stuff. But someone has to look at you and say, I can see myself doing that. So it was a good lesson for me to go ahead, bite the bullet, and do it. But then also remember, it has to be simple enough that anybody there can see themselves doing the same thing and duplicating it. So yeah. that's one thing. Great. Let me, uh, let me tell you just a, like, uh, a little piece that's sort of a spin on that. So uh, especially in product companies, uh, health product companies are very susceptible to this. Uh, sometimes people love to promote health products at things like uh, flea markets and trade shows. Uh, sometimes they even like to set up tasting tables at yoga studios and gyms. And, you know, these are great ways to introduce people to the products, and you can certainly get some customers on occasion from doing stuff like that. But just, you know, always think about that if your ambition is to build an empire, a sales force, then everything you're doing to build the business is being watched either consciously or unconsciously by all of your prospects. So if you're promoting the product at a table in the hot sun all day long at a flea market, and then you're wondering, why aren't I recruiting any great distributors? One of the reasons might be, they might look at the products, they might talk to you about the products, but they walk away going, well, that's cool. But the last thing I ever want to do is stand in the hot sun all day at a flea market. Right. <laughs> Every weekend. Uh, or, you know, maybe you have, uh, you know, signs plastered all over your car that say, you know, lose weight now, ask me how. And maybe somebody might call you on those signs. But maybe they also might think, you know what, that's not who I want to be. And it turns them off from being a sales leader. So um, not only do you want to keep things simple and duplicatable, it's like, you know, even if you're the best presenter in the world, probably the best thing to do is just follow the presentation. Mm -hmm. Just let the presentation do the presentation because – the last thing you want to send is the message to people. They either can't do what you're doing or they don't want to do what you're doing. Right, exactly. And All right, what's your second thing, mistake? Well, second, I guess I would say maybe dragging people who maybe I wanted it for them more than they wanted it for themselves. Wow. Or at least yeah, at that's that huge. point in time. And having to learn that everyone's not on my timeline and they, they may not have the desire. It, it, they just may not, or it may not be the timing for them. So really spending the time, you know, we say work with the willing, but spending the, the majority of my time, allocating my time with those that have the strongest desire, that are the most engaged, 
and I know that they're engaged by what they're doing, not just by what they're saying, but what they're doing. And then the others who aren't ready, not dragging them, but letting them know, you know, that we love them, we're going to circle back to them and check on them, and they may be product users, and that they may be great customers. They, maybe this is not what they want to do or not what they want to do right now, or maybe their circumstances don't permit right now. And I, I do have to kind of think back to myself. Like in the very beginning, like I said, I was kind of just dabbling in this. So I wasn't going for it full steam ahead at the beginning. Yeah, right. That's great. Uh, all right, so what's the smartest thing you've ever done? I think the smartest thing I ever did was not quitting and staying consistent, doing something consistently, building relationships consistently, um, you know, mentoring people that I recognized really wanted this and really spending the time on them. So I know that's more than one thing, but I, I would say the biggest thing is not giving up because you know, sometimes people, we, we talk to all different people. So we talk to people who need help financially, and this could really be a game changer for them, this business. But there's also people like myself who were making a six-figure income. I wasn't a part-time realtor. I was a very established full-time realtor. And then getting small checks that, you know, I remember point saying, look, real estate's what's paying my bills where do you think I'm going to spend my time? I said that to somebody in my upline. And I'm so glad that I kept going and didn't quit. And I got to that sweet spot where my Purium income started approaching my, my real estate income. And then mm -hmm. I was able to shift the percentage I did in real estate and the percentage I worked on Purium. There was a shift. And little by little it became, you know, like all Purium, very little real estate. And one thing that Eric, my enroller, my cousin did say to me, he, he would say this a lot. He's a very, very smart businessman, and he said, everyone should have residual income in their portfolio. He said that to me several times, so I always remembered that, and I was thinking, you know, I know he's right. So I'm glad when those checks were small and my other income was big, that I didn't just scrap this and say, you know what, this, what am I doing? This isn't worth the time. I'm getting little checks here and there. I'm getting my products paid for. I can afford my products either way. But I'm so glad I didn't quit. I'm also glad I didn't quit when, you know, I had that setback with what happened with my mom. And I've had other setbacks where maybe someone's flying high, somebody on my team, they're doing great, and then they fizzle out and, and the volume drops. You know, there, something happens there. You really have to be resilient in this business and really be able to weather these storms because it's a long-term thing. And I love your book, The Four-Year Career. I, I always recommend it. First of all, I love that you can read it in like an hour, and it's just so packed with meat and nuggets. But, you know, people think like, oh, four years. Like that, like that sounds like a long time for network <laughs> marketing. <laughs> but if you compare it, like my husband worked in corporate America for 26 years before he got out of that and got into real estate investing. And midstream, they changed the pension plan. And what he will have to show for that when he turns 55 is $400 a month, which is okay. You know, but that's 26 years invested with the company for a $400 a month pension. Yeah, it is uh... – you know, my sense about that is that when people invest 20 or 30 years in their life in a career or maybe a set of careers, but more importantly, just their life, and then they realize, wow, you know, I invested all these years, maybe even four, five, six, eight years of education, advanced education, and then all these decades in a career – and, you know, most people are not even making enough money to pay all their bills, let alone save 20 or 30% for those 20 years. 
so they have a really great nest egg. What they realize is, you know, I have really kind of wasted economically all of my best years. And so when they get in network marketing, you know, they are looking for a quick fix. Um, you know, it's you know, it's probably the same with weight loss. You know, it. You know, most of us, you know, just we didn't get 30 or 40 pounds overnight. It took like 20 or years to get it, but we want to get rid of it overnight. Right. <laughs> and uh, so, but you know, I, we just have so many great examples to to share with people. Look, you know, you spent four years in college. You might have spent a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars on that education. Um, you might still be paying for it. And so four years is not too long to ask to build a million or a multi-million dollar business. And what I like to share with people is, okay, this is 2015. Let's just say it's January 2016. Do you remember where you were January 2011 or 12? I guess that would be four years ago. Do you remember what you were doing? Do you remember what your life was like? Do you remember what a brief period of time that was ago? Do you have a sense of how fast the last four years has gone by? And 2020 is going to be coming at us at light speed. You know, it's like a freight train coming at us. And it's going to be here whether you're ready for it or not. And every month that people wait, every month that they procrastinate, every month that they're not motivated, every month that they're trying or struggling or fighting with the system or getting around to it or being busy or whatever people do to avoid actually engaging in this, cost them an actual fortune. Now, here's a concept for all of you to to look to wrap your head around. <clears throat> if you're eventually going to do this business, and this only applies if you're going to do the business and you're going to be somewhat successful, then pick the largest income month that you think you'll ever have. So let's just say it's ten grand a month. Let's just say that's the biggest month you're ever going to have in your network marketing career. If you wait just one month to engage in building that empire, that one month does not cost you the amount of money you would have earned in your first month in the business. It costs you the amount of money you would earn in your highest month in the business because that highest month is always perpetually one month removed. It's one month further away. So if somebody chooses to, you know, I love to have this conversation with somebody who says, well, you know, I'm, I'm going to do the business. I love the business. It's fantastic. I'm all over this. I'm going to crush this. I'm going to be your biggest superstar ever. And, you know, so that I take full advantage of the compensation plan and I get a few other things out of the way, you know, I'm going to start January 1st. You know, I want to get to like the full year so that I can, like, say I did all of these great things in one year. And what I love to show them is this concept of I just ask them, okay, Mr. Crush It, build the biggest organization that Purium's ever seen. What do you think your biggest month's going to be in the next 10 years? Of course, they'll say, you know, 50 grand a month or something. Okay, and uh, so let me show you how waiting till January 1st is going to cost you $100,000. Because it wow. will. Because you can never get those two months back. And you'll always be pushing those two months out in front of you perpetually. Right. So procrastinate is uh, very, very expensive in this that's, business. That's a really good sound bite. Procrastination is very expensive. I love it's, that. Uh, yeah, it's hugely expensive and and you can quantify it for people by sharing with them that concept mm -hmm. so um 
Sonia, so I, I love to ask this question to people. I'm going to ask you one question, and then uh, if you have a question for me, I'll take a question as we wrap this up. The question I have for you is, imagining that, you know, there's people out there listening to this tonight somewhere in the world, and maybe there's people listening to this somewhere in the world six months from now or maybe even six years from now and you know they haven't quite dropped into that place yet where everything they make up about this opportunity is green lights the stories they make up are confusing they're frustrating they're fearful they they just haven't gotten it yet and they really 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 want to get it and if the if the last if the only and last thing they could ever hear that might motivate them to make it happen, like if their defining moment could be tonight, what would you tell them? I would say action kills fear. Get into action. Stretch your comfort zone. Read Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill. And just start working on yourself. Personal development. So important. And, I mean, it's, you've got to get into that mode, that mindset of seeing something as though it's already happened. Visualize it. It is a done deal. It's happened. Now all you have to do is get from A to B. It's already happened in your mind. Once that's there in your mind, everything you need to do to get from A to B is going to play out and get you there. Yeah, you're absolutely right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, whether it was Bob Proctor or Eric Worre or uh, Tony Robbins, um, the number one message at GoPro this past weekend, 8,000 network marketers, was all about mindset. And... Um, so, like, I would just echo what you said. If you're not in massive action, it's not because you don't know how to do the business. It's because you haven't trained your mind to think about the business and think about you in the business in an empowering way yet. And that is a learned skill, and there are resources that you can study to help you learn that. And one of the exercises that uh, has worked for me when I'm talking to somebody that is stuck is no matter what company they're in, I'll, I'll ask them, I'll say, so are there a half a dozen people in your company that are crushing it? And they say, well, yeah, of course. Do you know who they are? Yes, I know who they are. You know, could you track them down, get their, get their contact information, and send them a request to interview them? And, you know, if, you know sometimes people say, well, I don't know. If, you know I don't know if they'd talk to me. If, you, if I gave you $50,000 to get all six of them on the phone in the next week separately and interview them for 30 minutes, would you get it done? Oh, well, sure, then I'd get it done. <laughs> so... <clears throat> Uh, get them on the phone and interview them. And don't ask them how they built an empire in your business. Ask them how they came to think about building an empire in your business. Ask them what they read, what they thought about, what they studied, what they listened to, what they watched. Ask them to teach you how they learned to believe and if you put six or eight 30 minute interviews together and you record them so imagine if you did that Imperium you just grab six or eight or ten people in Imperium called them up interviewed them for 30 minutes recorded it and all you did was listen to those recordings I, I say anybody would change their mindset in short order. Yeah, that would be an amazing immersion into that thought process. 
So just imagine you asked me that question, Sonia, and that's my answer because <laughs> we're at 659. You're, uh, I can just tell from your energy, you're a wonderful, beautiful, heartfelt leader, uh, and you've built a great organization. You're only two and a half years into it, so you, you know, wouldn't it, I just think it would be amazing to check in with you in another two and a half years and see how it's all manifested that would beautiful, be awesome. beautiful work. Beautiful Thank work. Thank you so much, Richard. And I mean, you're somebody that I really admire. You're such an icon of this industry. So it's really been a privilege to for you to have me on this call. For me to be on this call with you has been a privilege for me. So I really appreciate it so much. And it went by really fast. So, it did, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, it did. It was fun. All right. Thank you, Sonia. Have a beautiful remainder of 2015, and thank uh, all of you for showing up tonight for another Hero Call. Thank you. Good night. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Richard Bliss Brooks' Network Marketing Heroes podcast. If you are inspired and are ready to create your own success story, then it is time to take advantage of some of the top network marketing tools available. Pick up the top recruiting tool that has prospects saying, yes, the four-year career and the four-year career for women. Get your mindset right. Without a clear vision, success is lost. Check out the best-selling book on vision, Mach 2 with your hair on fire. Learn to think like a successful person with this step-by-step -step guide on how to break through your self-imposed limitations. Mach 2 Vision Training is a 90-minute four-part video training where you get Richard to walk you through crafting your vision. It's a must for anyone looking to step outside the box and hit the ground running. For 10% off your order, use the discount code HERO at checkout. If you're serious about building your business, make sure to subscribe to Richard's blog for all the latest tools and articles. This success story is not typical. It is meant to inspire you and show you what's possible. It is not what you should expect to accomplish. Your income will depend entirely on you, your commitment, your work ethic, your leadership, and your ability to acquire customers and inspire sales leaders to join your team. Most people who start off intending to build a sales team do not maintain their motivation to continue.